Hey hey, Sean here. I hope you're all doing great. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let's just get straight into it. I've seen the term Eurojank pop up more and more recently when describing certain games. It's used to describe European games, mainly Eastern European, that aren't necessarily AAA releases but strive to look pretty close to it, even on a budget more akin to indie games. They are supposedly also kind of rough around the edges. You would most likely hear this term when describing games like Greedfall, Kingdom Come Deliverance, the Metro series, and more recently Biomutant. You might even hear this term being thrown around for the Witcher series. Now, obviously the scale of quality here does vary quite broadly when it comes to these games, but I think I can safely say for me at least that I'd consider The Witcher 3 to be one of the best games of the last decade, while the likes of Biomutant probably fall more towards being pretty average overall. One thing I will say is that games I've listed there are all actually pretty memorable in their own way, and a lot of these have pretty dedicated fan bases. Now, back to the definition of Eurojunk. The word isn't technically in the dictionary, so its meaning can somewhat vary from person to person. Generally, the consensus on this is that it means a large and often sprawling European game that has lots of mechanics that is sometimes unpolished or unrefined on release, so pretty buggy really. You could pretty much apply that definition, minus the European, to a lot of Western releases. American developer Bethesda came to mind almost immediately. The Fallout and Elder Scrolls series are some of the wonkiest AAA games around, although they are still generally well received on release, and loved by many. You don't hear terms like a Marijank, so with that said, it does feel a little strange to have a term for these Eastern European releases that show signs of ambition beyond their means. It sounds a little patronising, though I suppose the most important thing is whether the term Eurojank gives a positive or negative reception when used to describe a game. There isn't a massive amount of history to the word, but it does go back as far as the Stalker series and does originate in endearment. From my perspective, or at least how I see it's aged, when I see it being used in user reviews or comments it's generally in a negative way more often than not. I've seen people use it to almost completely advise against a game. Greedfall comes to mind. I've seen more than a few people take shots at this game in reviews and comments where people will ask if it's good and people will say it's Eurojank without really unpacking such a vague and unusual statement. It's criticism without actually having to come up with criticism. I'd say this game had a pretty positive reaction with a lot of critics, at least judging by Metacritic at least. It's a game with a surprising amount of depth and character. It reminded me a lot of the old Bioware games like Dragon Age. I actually had a lot of fun here. Sure, it's not the most polished game in the world, but I'd be lying if I said it didn't put some AAA games to shame. Especially if you were to look at what was accomplished on such a small budget, a small team size and the development time. It certainly is more than competent at what it is trying to do, and while it might aim slightly above its station at times, it doesn't crash and burn like so many people would like to make out. Simply calling it Eurojank would probably leave people with a negative perception of this game. I'd go as far to say similar things about the other games I mentioned, such as Kingdom Come Deliverance, which is a great game that suffered a lot due to a very buggy release. Later on it did get patched and polished, there isn't an excuse for these kind of releases, but it does happen, and it isn't just with these European games. I've seen a few people spin it as a positive term in reviews and passing comments, which has helped me see why people might see it as a form of endearment, but still, these comments were few and far between from what people generally understand of the word. If its origins were in endearment, it certainly has changed now. The games actually deemed Eurojank are ones with smaller budgets to their American counterparts. It's common for a lot of these AA titles to have a budget of up to 5 million, which is not a massive amount in game development terms. It probably shares more in common with indie game development than it would a AAA title. A AAA title can easily go beyond 100 million these days, so to me, a game that costs around $5 million and looks and plays as good as the aforementioned is incredible. For example, in terms of AAA, one of the most expensive games, Grand Theft Auto V, cost over $250 million to make, and in comparison it was around $80 million for The Witcher 3. The two are very different games I know, 
What I'm trying to say is that the game industry counterparts in Eastern Europe can do incredible things with a far smaller budget. I also know that I haven't mentioned Cyberpunk 2077 before this point, especially next to an open world game like Grand Theft Auto V. It's mostly because I feel this game's development was very much mishandled. They misled their customers' expectations and released it at least a year too early. I still hope this game gets fully realized as what it was meant to be. It's a shame, but funnily enough, this is probably a game that could have been dubbed Eurojank. It has just been branded a bad game instead. I personally enjoyed it. I saw a lot of the flaws that others did too, but I didn't buy into that hype. I didn't feel too let down. I'm sure playing it on a decent PC helped that. The base Xbox One and PS4 ports were abominations though, I did see that. Back to my point, the criticism on the lower budgeted Eastern European releases I feel is far too harsh at times, and simply boiling down an entire team's work into a singular word like Eurojank sounds negative and reduces the game to its flaws. No matter how small a project it may be, the term almost feels mocking for wanting to be ambitious. No game developer, or any entertainment creator for that matter, should be discouraged from aiming higher. It completely disregards the things it, that it does well in their creation, and if we keep this attitude towards games, then game developers aren't going to want to take risks and try new things. We'll just end up getting the same old open world games that Ubisoft has been pumping out for the past 10 years, they're basically the same open world games, just in different skins. And anyway, what game released these days doesn't have some sort of rough edge to it on release. There's no excuse for it, it does suck. But it's absolutely not solely a European game problem though, rather a games industry issue as a whole. When you really dig into these games, you start to see that there's a lot of personality hiding beneath the surface. There are some really great games coming out from these developers who are clearly passionate about the games they make. That said, if you see or hear someone describe a game as Eurojank, do not be put off from trying it. You might be missing out on some pretty damn fine fun. And that is about it for today's video. Thank you all for watching and listening. Please like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what your favorite European game is. I'll see you next time. Take care.